Let's talk about polarity, polar molecules, and the dipole moments we find in some molecules. We find this in molecular substances, so forget ionic substances. Molecular substances are those that are held together by covalent bonding. And polar molecules are, in a word, lopsided. A polar bond, as you see in Zumdahl chapter 10.1, has separate centers of positive and negative charge in the bond. But a molecule with separate centers of positive and negative charge is a polar molecule. We'll distinguish between the two using some diagrams in a moment. The dipole moment, which is symbolized by the Greek letter mu, the dipole moment of a molecule is the product of the magnitude of the charge and the distance. The distance is the, what separates the centers of positive and negative charge. It's going to be measured in meters. The unit of dipole moment is the Debye, and the uh, this charge times the distance is equal to the dipole moment. One Debye is 3.34 times 10 to the negative 30th Coulomb meters. Now, look at these two uh, representations, these for molecular formulas, and see whether you think one is polar or nonpolar. And if you look for a moment, you can see that the hydrogen on one side of this tetrahedrally configured molecule of trichloromethane is clearly polar because the chlorines are all on one side, the hydrogen is on the other. The chlorines are a lot more electronegative than the hydrogens. On the other hand, if you put a chlorine where the hydrogen was to make carbon tetrachloride, the bonds are still polar, but this is point symmetrical around the carbon, and so there is no polarity. Now let's look at two compounds, NOF and NO2F. One of them is heavily polar, the other is slightly polar. Which dipole moment would you associate with each compound? And explain, of course, why you think that. First, it would help if we gave you the structural formula. The NOF is nitrosyl fluoride, and it has this structure. The NO2F is nitrile fluoride, and it has this structure. Please note Maybe you have resonance possible in the Lewis structures. Well, let's look at the numbers. As you can see, nitrosyl fluoride is about three times more polar than nitrile fluoride. Why would that be? Well, first of all, nitrile fluoride has a resonance structure. And as you can see, if you move these electrons around, you could have the double bond between the NO over here. That would be a kind of a symmetrical look at the same molecule. And so if you can have two different structures, that of course reduces the total energy. Now you can see that this is going to have a 120 degree bond angle around it. And of course the resonance structure means that you've got the two oxygens on one side, the fluorine on the other, and the two oxygens, of course, can counterbalance the fluorine, giving it a kind of a symmetry. Whereas in the nitrosyl fluoride, the fluorine and oxygen have to be both on the same side of the molecule with this little lone pair of electrons up here that couldn't possibly balance them. And so you're going to have a significant dipole moment here and a more polar molecule than than this one. A polar covalent bond has a bond dipole that separates the positive and negative charge centers in an individual bond. Bond dipoles, though, have both a magnitude and a direction. They're vector quantities. That helps to explain what we saw in the previous slides. Ordinarily, a polar molecule would have polar bonds, but Having polar bonds is not sufficient to make a polar molecule. 
a molecule may have polar bonds and be overall nonpolar, as we saw in carbon tetrachloride, if the bond dipoles cancel. Here's another example. Carbon dioxide has polar bonds, but it's a linear molecule. The bond dipoles cancel, and there is no net dipole moment in the molecule overall. The water molecule also has polar bonds, but it's bent. The bond dipoles do not cancel. They're pointing kind of in the same direction. And water is a polar molecule. It has a net dipole with a dipole moment of 1.84 divides. To predict molecular polarity, step one is to use your electronegativity values to predict bond dipoles. Step two, you'll use the Vesiper method. Uh, look at where the electron centers are and predict the molecular shape. It helps to arrange the electron centers first and then move the uh, bonded atoms, the atoms that are bonded to the central atom, move them around so that they get minimum energy get as far away from each other as they can. And from the molecular shape, then, you can determine whether the bond dipoles are going to cancel, as they do in carbon dioxide. And even though they have dipole bonds, you have a nonpolar molecule. Alternatively, they could combine, as in water, to produce a resulting dipole moment for the molecule, kind of an addition of dipole moments. Now remember, too, that lone pair electrons can make a contribution to the dipole moments of the molecule.